Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to continue talking about classes and inheritance. And in particular, we're going to be talking about how to solve a problem in our inheritance hierarchies when we try to call member functions from derived classes. And it's probably easiest for me to just illustrate this, but it has to do something with virtual functions, which are going to be part of our solution to solve this problem. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the code and look at a few examples. So what I've got here just to review is some inheritance hierarchy. So I'm going to have some base class here. And I've got a derived class below it, which publicly inherits from the base class. So again, in the code here, here's the base class with a constructor, a destructor, and one member function, just printing off that the member function was called, and a derived class, which is publicly inheriting from the base class, and then doing something very similar here, just saying that the constructor was called the destructor, and then the derived version of this member function. Now, do notice that this member function is named the same thing in both the classes. And for our purposes, that's fine. Let's go ahead and run if we were going to create instances of these objects. So base instance. And maybe we would want to call the base instance member function. So go ahead and take a moment here to guess which function is going to be called here, this one or this one. And if I go ahead and compile, if I run here, it is in fact the base member class because, well, that's the type of this instance here. So no surprises there. And just for completeness, let's go ahead and just change this to derived. And I'll just have an instance here. And from our instance, call a member function. And I'll uh, recompile this. Whoops, if I spell things right, <laughs> then I'll recompile it. Um, and then go ahead and do the same exercise. Pause for a moment and guess, is this member function going to be called or this member function? Well, if I go ahead and run this, we will see the derived member function is called. Now, of course, the derived uh, class here is inheriting from the base. So we have to call the base constructor first, then the derived constructor, then the appropriate member function here is called, and then the destructor is called in reverse order. So no real surprises there. In fact, we can think of each of these uh, classes here as having their own little table here with member func. And I'll go ahead and just annotate that as part of base class here as well, member func. So the different things they can do, um, as well as the constructors, destructors, and so on. Now, where do things get interesting or what problem am I trying to fix here? Well, what happens if I, instead of just creating the explicit type, if I create a pointer, meaning I just have some base pointer. And because I have this base instance here, I can point it to anything that is either a base or derived because derived is a type of base class. So let me just write that out to be uh, very explicit. Uh, derived is a type of base. And this is the power of inheritance-based polymorphism, this idea that I can decide at runtime what the actual type is going to be. So I might just generally say, hey, I might want a base or derived, and then based off some decision made in the code, be able to instantiate the proper object. So this time I'm just going to create new derived and I'll do the same exercise on our instance. We'll call the member function and I need to uh, clean up our memory since we have allocated here. So let's go ahead and compile this and it compiles just fine. We can do this again, just to emphasize that line uh, 18 is legal. And let's go ahead and run this. Now I'll give you the uh, same exercise where you can go ahead and pause the video and make a guess. Is member func going to be called or is this member func from the derived going to be called here? So let's go ahead and try to run. And well, we see the base constructor, the derived constructor, and hmm, this is actually interesting here. I see the base member function called and only the base destructor, and maybe we'll want to actually think about that as well. Um, but this is a little bit frightening to me, and maybe it should be to you, because I've said, hey, give me memory for the derived class, this thing over here. 
that's how I want to instantiate this base here. And this instance is going to be this derived object, but it's calling the wrong member function. It's calling something up in our hierarchy. It's calling this actual function when we really want to be calling this here. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is we just haven't given our classes or instructed C++ that if uh, we create a base class here and instantiate it as one of the drive classes, we have permission to call the right member function. And that should be the right behavior to do. So the mechanism that allows this is something known as dynamic dispatch. That means at runtime, be able to find the correct function to call. Now, how do we know which function is correct? And this is where virtual functions come into play in C++. So what we're going to do is go ahead and mark in our derived class to start that we want this member function to override behavior. OK, um, so this is where I'm going to start. I think a lot of folks also teach this in another way. But um, the first thing we want to be able to do is say, hey, this member function here, if I'm an actual drive class, I want to override and take precedence over this member function. Now, let's go ahead and see if this is enough for us to compile here. And if I go ahead and compile this, well, will it work? Uh, we're actually going to get an error here because it says we've marked this as override, but it doesn't override. So there's actually another annotation that we need to make here. And the annotation is we need to come up into our uh, base class and mark this as a virtual function here. So let me go ahead and recompile here. And if I rerun, let's go ahead and see if this is going to work here. Well, now my actual um, instance here, I have the instance here for derived the drive constructor, and now the right member function is being called. So since derived is at the bottom of my chain, what I say here in my inheritance hierarchy, I say, look, if I somewhere up in my inheritance hierarchy, there's another function that has the same name, member function, which I see it here in both instances, or in the code, I want to override that behavior. And this virtual keyword is the enabling or the sort of uh, qualifier that you put on member functions, non-static member functions in a base class to say, hey, this function could be overridden by some of its uh, derived classes, Okay, which we have seen in an example here. Now, again, what would happen if I forget one of these parts? Well, the override part, which I'm actually going to get rid of here, um, actually is a newer C++ 11 syntax thing. So you don't have to have it. We can actually see that the right uh, function is being called here. But I would strongly suggest that you always have override here and you sort of build it the way that I did starting with the derived class um, because it'll help the compiler check that, hey, the thing that you're trying to override maybe you know, maybe you spell this function wrong or something, <laughs> but to actually look somewhere up in the hierarchy, so at any of your parents, which you're driving from, so base in this instance, or further up in the chain, that you can actually override them. Now, let's go ahead and look at a few other things here. Um, what if I go ahead and just say that this is a new uh, base class here? So let's go ahead and see if we have the correct behavior. If I just instantiate something uh, or have a pointer to some base and, well, create memory for a base. So base is a type of base that should be legal. But let's go ahead and confirm and see that we have the right base member function called here. So again, we are good to go. Now, let's go ahead and look at one more example where maybe you want to explicitly call the base member function because maybe there is some functionality that's different or there's a weird off case where you actually want to call that uh, right member function. So how would I do that? Well, let's go ahead and try to put together what we've learned before with our scope operators and just type out explicitly base here. I'm going to make this uh, derived and let's go ahead and try to compile. Try to run 
And now you can see we're explicitly calling the base member function here. So that is again allowed if there was some situation where you didn't want to override the behavior, you can always do that. But again, what virtual enables you to do is again, not to have to make that sort of decision and just say, hey, if we instantiated this as derived, then actually call the uh, derived member function. So in a sense, C++ is just putting in this for you here. Now the actual mechanism um, for doing this, um, and let me go ahead and just leave it clean um, like this and recompile this, is something known as a vtable. And I'll go ahead and explain that in another video since this one's getting a little bit long um, and kind of draw it out just so you can see. Now you might also be wondering, and oftentimes you'll see C++ code where you also come in here and maybe you write uh, virtual here. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, and go ahead and run, it's still going to do the right thing. Um, but then if you derive some other class, for instance, from derived, so derived to or whatever, um, you maybe have to override this function and then sort of be uh, explicit about it. So that's the idea and why and, and where I'm putting virtual. But again, just the key rule is to go ahead and put override here and then make sure that functions that you're uh, in your base class from your derived class are marked as virtual. And this allows C++ to use this dynamic dispatch mechanism to choose at runtime the correct function to actually call that matches the data type of your object. Now again, a few subtle things that are missing here. You might notice that for our derived, we don't have the actual destructor being called, and we probably want to talk or understand a little bit more about this vtable thing, but I'm going to save that for some future lessons. So folks, if you enjoyed this, if this help clears up a little bit of these idea with virtual functions, and maybe you've heard that idea before, go ahead and click the like button. And if you want to see those future videos that are going to be coming talking about vtables and virtual destructors, a common interview question, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. I hope this is helpful and thank you for your time and we'll see you next time.